We are with Representative Vandana Slatter from the 48th District. After two weeks of continuous round-the-clock floor action in the House, a couple of your bills made it to the Senate, so let's talk about those for a minute. Your COVID-19 privacy bill, what does that do and where is it now? HB 1127 is addressing health data privacy. And what does that really mean? It's for COVID-19 health data. So the bill lives at a complex intersection of privacy and public health. So on one level, we want to use technology to help us detect COVID-19 and when we're exposed to people, so digital tools and apps that are on our phone. But on the other hand, we don't want our COVID-19 health information that we might get collected on a phone to be used for any other reason besides protecting our public health and saving lives. So we don't want it necessarily to be sold on e-commerce or to be used as a barrier to get housing or employment or financial support or for law enforcement if that's not the purpose of it. And so this bill sort of tries to strike that balance between using technology to combat a deadly virus and keep us safe while still protecting our civil liberties. And it's helpful for employers and for schools and for other places where these tools might be used. So I was really, really happy to see this pass the House on a 76 to 21 vote. It was a bipartisan measure. My co-sponsor is a Republican, and we really feel like in the healthcare space that there's some common ground with respect to increasing protections and privacy for COVID-19 health data. It can reassure people that their information is being used appropriately, particularly when we're using digital tools. So that was very exciting, and I'm happy to see it move on to the Senate. And then your other bill is 1472. This is about adding a graduate student to the council. So this measure adds a graduate student to the Washington State Achievement Council, and WASAC is our state's higher education agency. So it's got a big role in managing and administrating our financial aid programs, like some of the state's largest financial aid programs, including like behavioral health care loan tuition repayment program. And it also is required to administrate a lot of policies for college success. So what this bill is seeking to accomplish is to provide an additional student voice on the council that helps to advise this agency. And we already have an undergraduate student, so we're adding a graduate student. And why that and why now? Well, graduate students are pretty important in helping other students achieve college success. They work as teaching assistants, they give lectures, they run labs, and they're really important for higher education research. If they were not there, then all research would probably stop in a higher education institution. But they're also really important to our workforce. And so when we think about who our scientists are, our doctors, our nurses, our fire chiefs, our teachers, our lawyers, our public policy specialists, our accountants, engineers, computer scientists, all of those require graduate degrees. And so they're not only helpful in helping undergraduate students get through college and also do research, but they're also really helpful in our economy and in creating innovation and our ability to have a good workforce that supports us in the future. So if we're gonna address workforce shortages, we need them on that council to speak to the goals and the policies we have. And it also helps us to build lifelong pathways to meaningful work and good wage jobs in our state. So in my mind, this is a workforce bill, an equity bill, and even a behavioral health care bill. So I was very happy to see that also pass the House. And I believe that was a 77 to 21 vote. And I'm looking forward to seeing it pass the Senate and have the governor sign it.